you know there are two main types of dry eye and not knowing which type you have may lead to unnecessary or unhelpful treatments? Well, the first most common type of dry eye is called evaporative dry eye. This is usually caused by something called meibomian gland dysfunction. The meibomian glands line the upper and lower eyelids and produce an oily substance that creates the outermost layer of our tears. When this is not produced properly, the tears evaporate quickly because they don't have that oily protection. There could be many underlying causes for meibomian gland dysfunction, whether it be due to chronic inflammation, the presence of bacteria, mites, or even ocular rosacea. Also, autoimmune diseases or certain medications can lead to issues in these glands, not to mention trauma or surgeries or eyelid malplacements like ectropion where the eyelids bow outward or entropion where they fold inward or even simple age and hormone related changes can cause these complications. Evaporative dry eye can also be caused by issues related to the goblet cells. These are present in the conjunctiva, this clear tissue that covers the white shell, the sclera of the eye. Issues with the goblet cells aren't as common, but they can be caused by autoimmune diseases, trauma, chronic inflammation or chronic infections. Aqueous deficient dry eye is not as common as the evaporative type, and this occurs when the lacrimal gland does not secrete that aqueous watery layer of the tears as sufficiently as it should. And this is often due to underlying autoimmune diseases, particularly Sjogren's syndrome, which directly attacks the lacrimal glands and salivary glands, leading to severe dry eye and mouth. We also see aqueous deficient dry eye due to age or hormonal changes or medications and trauma. It's quite common to have both types of dry eye and sometimes one can lead to the other. So finding the right treatment regimen and sticking to it can help to prevent the progression of dry eye from more mild signs and symptoms to more severe ones that might be more difficult to treat and control.